Greetings, and salutations, and welcome to Illegitimate Legends. I'm your host, Artema, and today we'll be taking a look at some of the more unusual League of Legends builds. And this week, I've decided to take another look at Lulu. You'll remember a long time ago, I did a DPS Lulu build. We're going for the other side of Lulu's particular unique traits. We're doing an AP Lulu. Now, this didn't strike me as an illegitimate build at first, for the very distinct reason that the very first time I played Lulu, I fully stacked a Magi Soul Stealer. I don't normally buy Magi Soul Stealers, and nor do I usually buy stackable items playing support lane. True, I wasn't really doing my job as support, but I was rolling all the face. Lulu is a distinctly powerful champion, but she's got a few weaknesses, and if you build correctly, you completely counteract those. You make do with the fact that she's got very low AP ratios, and completely destroy the opposition with very high damage, relatively low cooldowns, and in the end game, still incredible high support potential. This build can be played in the mid or the bottom lane, if you're going to be bottom lane, you do not get any farm. Kinda sucks. Really loses out on Lulu's ability to do relatively high DPS from auto attacks. Thank you, Pix. But, in the bottom lane you are supporting an AD carry and allowing a more powerful mid lane to mid. That said, in the mid lane you actually have stupidly good range, particularly if you know what you're doing. So, you can zone out their AP carry, prevent them from getting farm, and get plenty of kills if you really know what you're doing. Lulu is a very, very good AP champion, and if you follow this step-by-step -step guide, I'm pretty sure you'll do just fine. In the early laning phase, the most important thing you can do is poke down your opposition. Simply the most important thing you can do. Poke constantly. Glitter Lance has an amazing range. Get this ability first and use it to do lots and lots of damage. Also use it to stay safe. That slow is phenomenal. You can keep your AD carry safe or, and yourself safe if you're in the bottom lane, or just use it to poke down the typically shorter ranged Nuka champions that will roll around in mid lane. There's a reason people like Zed and Kha'Zix have made their play in mid lane a lot, particularly recently. It's the fact that their abilities are skill shots and typically outrange, you know, most of the champions who you'll be dueling with who have similar damage. Most mid lane champions aren't skill shot based, and the ones that are don't do that much early. They're based on AP ratios, Lulu is most certainly not. You've got incredible early damage and use that to your advantage. Poke like hell, me friends! Next ability you want to learn is Help Picks. This is your E. This move is telling Picks to go help. How he helps depend on what you target. You can either target an ally and give them a small shield, very useful for protecting yourself from a gank. Not necessarily going to save your life, but it might, so keep that in mind. But the other thing you can do is attach it to an enemy, enemy champion or enemy minion. Pix, you will know, is the source of the second shot from Glitter Lance. He's also the source of your additional auto attacks. Because of this, you can attach Pix to an enemy, dealing a fairly large sum of damage and then figuring out where Pix is in relation to the enemy, get an instant strike of Glitter Lance. They're not dodging it if it's coming from them. Unless you make a mistake, and it does happen, but learn to make not that mistake. So using the combination of Glitter Lance and E, you've got a massive amount of damage at your fingertips. And at Pix's fingertips, let's not discount our little flying friend. And by using this damage, you can very, very effectively rip down, say, half of Annie's health in about two to three abilities. Just done. It's incredibly powerful burst damage considering the levels. Granted, certain people will be able to protect themselves. People will have, say, Molten Shield on Annie's case, and just block some of that damage. Or, in the case of champions like Severe, they have a spell shield. They can absorb some of the hit. 
That is, until you remember that Glitter Lance fires twice. With high skill, you hit them with both projectiles at actually max range. Because you hit them with both, they block one, take the full hit from the other, and they weren't going to take damage from both anyway. You've got all your damage there, even against their spell shield. You just can't use help picks to open. And saving that ability to use later is no great loss anyway. Remember the tricks you can pull. Remember that help picks deals a lot of damage by itself, and adding glitter lance deals a lot as well. Remember that you have sight on anybody who's attached with picks. It doesn't do that much, but allows you to plan your next glitter lance if it's still on cooldown when you used help picks. The last ability you'll be getting in the early laning phase is your W. Get this at level 4. It will save your life. Repeatedly. I cannot stress how important getting your W is. It's not hugely important early on. Too early, you've got a crowd control with no source of damage. Unless you're in the support lane, but still. You're here to poke. You're here to build AP and destroy. So, maybe you don't need a crowd control until level 4. Just saying. And it's not that good, because they can still walk away. It's not a stun. It's a polymorph. It just prevents attacks. On the other hand, it is a fantastic escape. If somebody ganks you and you give yourself a 50% move speed and just float back to your tower, it's not so much they can do, particularly if you throw in the fact that you've got an insane slow attached to your main damage source. They die from tower, they get slowed, you put a shield on yourself, and maybe ult if you've gotten that far into the game. You will survive, and if they've dived too hard, you'll get yourself a double kill. I did it. It happened. It can happen to you. Lulu is extremely powerful in the early game, and the most important thing you can do in your early Bs is buy spell penetration. Your AP is not the main source of your damage. If somebody else gets an Amplifying Tome and you get an Amplifying Tome at exactly the same time, you will receive approximately half the benefit. AP is not that strong. Spell penetration, however, really does benefit from the fact that nobody has high magic resistance and they don't scale their magic resistance with levels. Additionally, you have incredibly high base damages. Have I said this before? I feel like I have. High base damage. Reducing their magic resist to the point where you get all of your high base damage. Very, very strong. In the mid game, when all the towers are starting to fall, the situation stays much the same. Lulu comes into her own and actually gets a lot more power. Her abilities start to max out. You start being able to actually level the power of your polymorph. Actually put some real damage behind things. Not just the early game, oh you've only got 400 health so I can rip a quarter of that off in one blast kind of damage. The mid game, I'm dealing 600 damage a blow kind of damage. The I'm actually really powerful, dangerous, and you should fear me damage. The I'm stacking a Magi Seal Stealer and I'm up to 17 damage. The risk, however, is that you haven't done well. If you haven't been doing so well, best revert now to a more supporting role, get more supporting items, still consider AP because Lulu's very, very powerful with it, but now is the time to choose whether you're going to become a full AP caster or whether you're going to fall back on Lulu's strengths. Not saying she isn't strong with full AP, but she's... N well, if she's not doing well, she can fall behind very, very quickly and lose potential. Sadly, this didn't happen to me. I didn't have a game where I felt like I was being crushed, so I can't exactly describe how to come out of it. On the other hand, if you are ahead and you don't have a Magi Soul Sealer, consider getting it. You're going to need it to stay in the game once the end game begins. If you can't get that fully stacked, there's a risk that you're going to fall behind once late game happens, and mid game is usually all about preparing for the late game. Or bringing about an early victory, which is something you should definitely consider. 
with Lulu. Her late game does fall off. I'm not going to make any mistakes about this. I'm not going to lie to you. Her late game isn't very good. But the mid game, particularly if you're ahead, is the point in which you can control everything. You've got a massive amount of damage output. Even Pix has a massive amount of damage output at this time. You should have maximum possible spell penetration. Those are your first priorities. With that, all the magic damage you do will crush anything that it hits. Granted, you're effectively single target with help picks, but Glitter Lance is not. Glitter Lance will hit everything. The only people who were not going to fear that move are the tanks. And remembering, you have Whimsy. Your polymorph ability can lock down an enemy champion for an extended period of time. You can just say, hey, no more damage coming out of you. They turn into a fluffy bunny, or a cupcake, or a dragon, and sit there looking silly. Then you kill them. You can do it on Vayne, you can do it on, say, Ezreal, you can do it on anyone who's demolishing your team. Just stop them. Always remember that. Also, as Whimsy is getting stronger, the speed boost is also adding to your AP. The hidden effect, it's not so hidden, but most people don't know about it. 60 AP at level 5 comes out of your W. 60 AP. Might not seem like a lot. You get a Rabadon's death cap, that becomes closer to... Hmm... 80 to 85 AP. That's a lot. That's like... Having an entire Deathfire Grasp sitting on your W. Yeah. Using that, you can buff your own damage, or the damage of your allies if you have an AP carry ally. They will benefit from it more than you. That's just the way things go, but with your spell penetration, you should be just fine to enjoy the benefits of that extra damage, or extra shielding, or extra healing, whatever the case may be. However, as the game starts to shift into the late game, you make an important shift in your playstyle. Stop becoming the frontline Lulu that's crushing the opposition, and step back. Start using your abilities more and more to support, you will still do massive damage with Glitter Lance. That can never be taken away from an AP Lulu. But you are incredibly squishy. You cannot, for the most part, 1v1 an endgame AD carry, and you'll have a hard time 1v1-ing a lot of mages. There are some that you will completely destroy, and if you're clever, you can take on practically anyone, particularly considering your kiting potential. But you need to really consider that you can't just force 1v1s all day. It's not going to win you the game. What you have to do is you need to step back, use your ultimate on your tanks, shield the people who need to be shielded, and just do damage with Glitter Lance from afar. Step back into the position Lulu fills as a support into the end game. From that position, you can easily bring about a victory. You can crowd control and nuke and destroy from safety, allowing your team to win fights, allowing you to win the game. It's vital that you remember to do this. If you continue to go, I am an AP god, you will all bow down to me, the enemy will eventually say, hey, no, you're a little girl in a funny hat, we're gonna kill you. And if you're up the front, you will die. And if you die, you'll use, lose your Medjay Soul Stealer stacks. You'll lose your role, and everything you've built up to this point will start to fall. I cannot stress enough how important it is to fall back. Take that step back, take a supporting role. A double support team is still incredibly powerful, and you will win. But only if you step back. 